Northwest Outdoorsman is presented by WorkSharp. This week on the Northwest Outdoorsman. Up here. He says, nope. We are quail hunting in eastern Washington. It's fun, though. I, uh, I feel younger. <laughs> nice job. Thank you. Nice shot. The Northwest Outdoorsman, presented by WorkSharp, is brought to you by Max Lure. Explore the Dalles. Tonic Polarized Eyewear. The Northwest Outdoorsman Rod Series. Valley Marine. The Northwest is blessed with abundant public lands available for upland bird hunters willing to wander the seemingly endless acreage. Quail habitat is plentiful on state and Bureau of Land Management lands in eastern Washington, so wing shooters have ample opportunity. Mike and Rich Herod explore these lands looking for quail and later join Eric Broughton for a hunt full of action. The quail are fast, the company is excellent, and the bird dogs love every minute of it. Tough being a dog. Tough. Well, yeah, that's that's kind of the deal every year, isn't it? You you, you spend winter, spring and summer just just every once in a while looking at maps and you see a little piece of public ground. I think I'd like to look at that. We'll get them to run out up here and then we'll come and we'll hunt this down. Yeah, now it's got Sue, right? Let's just let it let's just let it go now for a minute. So my cousin Mike and I decided we would explore some new potential quail hunting areas. So the place we started was just south of Cooley City. Sue on the point and I'm just running around. Oh yeah. We checked it from canal to the base of that cliff and all the way down to the end of it. Now you get older, your nose just runs all, all the, time. the time. Yeah, why is that? I don't know. <laughs> that was a pretty good observation, though. <laughs> it's not exactly warm. Come here. So I just carry around a little portable dish and a couple of those quart-sized bottles you use when you're you know, playing sports, and I just I give them water that way. I think we'll, I'll give them some water while we're here. Just... seen some quail in this spot when I was archery deer hunting, but it seemed like they just moved on. That's where they were really before. Yeah, they, I mean, they put that big piece of equipment right here, you know? It's worked. I bet on some days it'd hold birds. The day we got there, it just didn't happen to hold any birds, but it was still neat because we were down the bottom looking up at the big basalt cliffs, and if someone said, let's go back, I'd go back. So we took the road and we kind of circled back like we were going to town and there was a flat in there. We decided that we'd go run the dogs there for a while. If you sit and you watch Trey, cause she's eight, she'll come up to a place like this and she'll look for a second. And it's almost like she just picks an area. I don't know if it's true or not. Where like Sue just at three just makes patterns everywhere. And we've got a couple of spots we've hunted where she's hit birds, say 600 yards up from where we park our car. You let her out, she goes back there. You just watch her on the GPS, she'll go back there. She'll, you know, check the, check the whole area out. Come on, Trey. Oh, peanuts. And again, we did r run into any birds. Not, uh, Elk camp roast happening. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's all part of the hunt, right? <laughs> Before we even go, we know we're gonna stay over. It's like, okay, what are we gonna have for breakfast? Yeah. So, yeah, we had sourdough pancakes. I think we had some eggs. We made some bacon. 
you had told me about this spot from the deer season and my wife and I had went there about a week, maybe two weeks before that and we ran into two cubbies of birds. One of the things I like to do is sling a shotgun over my shoulder so that I can hunt and somebody else can film when we're doing something like this. But this past winter I took a pretty bad fall and I wasn't able to shoot. I gotta get down in here. And the dogs were doing what they normally do. They let out a few hundred yards and the older dog was on point. I got feathers on both birds. Uh, but no bird. I don't know. Coming up after the break. On the top until that happened. Nice shot. The Northwest Outdoorsman presented by WorkSharp is brought to you by Max Lure. Explore the Dalles. Tonic polarized eyewear. The Northwest Outdoorsman Rod Series. Valley Marine. Welcome back. Mike is closing in on some quail. And the dogs were doing what they normally do. They let out a few hundred yards and, uh, and the older dog was on point. Ooh, we don't have a good spot here. Go around. I got feathers on both birds. Uh, but no bird. I don't know. Yeah, once they got on top of that cliff, they were too flat. I was just, it's fun though. Yeah, it was fun though. They went up and went whoop, right over the top of the, of the draw, which is taller than my head. They went up and then went down, they, they were gone. Because if they're down, you know, if they're down on, below that, we can, mm -hmm. just, we can just drop off. You know, after that first bunch of quail got up, I thought, man, this might be pretty good. Sagebrush right there. Uh-huh. What is that? Seven feet? Oh yeah. We stayed on a bench and then we had to drop down to the floor. And it's a neat piece of country because there's just a big kind of a basalt cliff on one on one corner. Nope. Don't want water. From those birds there, they all went they all flushed up on top. Uh-huh. We went around that corner and uh, we didn't bump any birds. At that point, we were within about three, 400 yards of where my wife and I had run into the big cubbies about a week, maybe two weeks before that. So I thought, well, maybe we could run into the birds there. We can walk just like this. We'll go to the edge of that. Whoa, what we got here? There's some bigger birds here. Yep. I haven't seen very many coyotes this year. No, I haven't hardly seen any either. And when I ran into it the previous week, I knew you and I would eventually go back there and I wanted to show it to you because there's an old like horse paddock and and barn and it's it's all it's perfectly weathered and some of us torn down, some of us stand there. Seeing those old barns and corrals just took me back to the days when we were kids and we used to hunt the fields near my grandfather's place in Bell, Oregon, and it just took me back to that time. Sue, come here. Part of like now hunting with dogs is different than when I first started. I started right at the tail end of when you used to hunt with bales on. And then GPS collars came out. But the new style is you, you use a handheld, but also they make a watch. And I just have a watch and it tells me the direction they are and how far away they are. And it indicates if they go on point or not. Oh yeah, on point. Yeah, 
That scent's coming from a ways. She's just getting enough of it. Uh -huh. But she ha she can't point and figure out where it's at. I think at the bottom they hit a pheasant that was running. <laughs> Dang it, pheasant. That was a rooster too. Uh, yep, hard on a pointing dog. You know that thing he just snuck all through here. Yeah. That's where you need a flushing dog. So you're probably right about chuckers. It's as high up in there as they got, the dog would go on point and then it'd break and it'd run and, and, and then uh, the pheasant came out. But then I believe very shortly they hit another pheasant. Got another pheasant, you suppose? I thought this was gonna be good too. He started out great and then, well, then you know what happened. Thing is, I'd still come back. Oh yeah. <laughs> So after a couple of days of not getting very many birds, I thought maybe I'd give my buddy Eric a call because I knew he knew a place where we could get some birds. I met Rich walleye fishing with uh, the Max Lures guys, but the quail hunting thing was, you know, I've done a lot of it over the years. Coming up after the break, Oh, nice meal. Here we go. Nice shot, Mike. The Northwest Outdoorsman presented by WorkSharp is brought to you by Max Lure. Explore the Dalles. Tonic Polarized Eyewear. The Northwest Outdoorsman Rod Series. Valley Marine. Welcome back. The guys have a new promising quail hunting spot. So after a couple of days of not getting very many birds, I thought maybe I'd give my buddy Eric a call because I knew he knew a place where we could get some birds. I met Rich walleye fishing with uh, the Max Lures guys, but the quail hunting thing was, you know, I've done a lot of it over the years. So I'll probably want to go back that way. Okay. Yeah, it was two to three weeks. I'd been up that area before and I'd always just driven past, but then you called. And you said, hey, I got a spot. And when you told me about it, it was the exact same spot. Uh, you knew somebody who was familiar with the area and lived close to there who had invited us to you know, come up and hunt. I'm going to stick this leash in the back of your vest when we, All right. we'll get set. So this, this brush is pretty high, so it's good shot, Mike. Good shot, Mike. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes you can throw in a great shot. Well. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, no, it isn't going to be pretty, but I'm just, you know, <laughs> it's like telling your wife you like her outfit. It's the same thought. No, I never met Mike, Richie's cousin. Uh, he was a uh, pretty good shot, as he, as he told me to say. Yeah. <laughs> you have just a, a second to correct your body position. And so those first few quail make you look silly, especially right out of the car. All right, we're just going to shoot birds. Come on. There's a nice shot, Mike. Is that what it was? <laughs> See, now you're getting the hang of it. It's like a pinball machine up there. Nice shot, Mike. Get right in this tall. I marked him. Straight ahead about eight yards. But then for some reason, I think the first bird I killed, it got up and it went to the left. I was completely out of position and I just uh, turned and shot and, and hit it. Look at that. There go. All right. Nice, isn't it? We got one. Yeah, we got one. <laughs> There's just too much scent on the ground. <laughs> it's like in a perfume factory. Well, hopefully she'll figure out she's got to slow down. But on the snow, and it was fresh snow, there was tons of bird track. And the thing about like pointing dogs versus flushing dogs is you can't put them in a perfume store because they don't know where the scent is coming from. It's a great place for a flushing dog. So we're in good shape still. Tennis ball size. I know. Like, be patient. I feel if, I'm a, if I do it quick, I'm, I, uh, I feel younger. <laughs> it's hard to keep track of the birds you're shooting at. That's why I shoot a single shot. If you if I have three shells in my gun, I end up shooting more than I 
I sh probably should, and, and you can't keep track of which ones are down and where, and your dog's kind of doing this, and you're doing this. Yeah, those birds are right down on this edge down in here. Okay. God dang it. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> <laughs> Rubber boots and snow and rocks, it's good. Gotta be careful. Oh, nice meal. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. This is fun. There you go. Nice shot, Mike. We got a few singles up and we got to the fence and unloaded across the fence. It always happened when you unload to cross the fence, that's usually when the birds know. Oh, you sucker. And he was sitting there looking at you across I that fence. I had my gun going. unloaded because I crossed the fence. When should I go? When should I go? When should I go? He knew my gun was unloaded. Boy, he's quick. <laughs> All right. Nice hand. Maybe up, up against, that bird may be up against the hillside because of the wind. Yeah. Right there. That's what she was sending. Yeah, when you have it connected early and you start thinking to yourself, this might not work out very good, and then you hit one, you're like, whew, okay, we're back. We, we can do this some more. I had a hard time picking. Oh, that was close. That's just like a snapshot. Is she on point? No. Coming up after the break. The Northwest Outdoorsman presented by WorkSharp is brought to you by Max Lure. Explore the Dalles. Tonic Polarized Eyewear. The Northwest Outdoorsman Rod Series. Valley Marine. Welcome back. The quail are flying every direction. Yeah, when you have it connected early and you start thinking to yourself, this might not work out very good, and then you hit one, you're like, whew, okay, we're back. We, we can do this some more. I had a hard time picking. Oh, that was close. That's just like a snapshot. As far as missing goes, you know, we all miss, so it's okay. Is she on point? No. Okay. It was a beautiful day out there and lots of quail. And I was getting a little jealous I wasn't packing a shotgun. This little saddle right here is fun when they come up here. I just don't know. Track them down maybe, right in here. Here's another set. Oh, she's on point. I'm just gonna swing around this bush. Oh. Oh, sorry. I followed the track of that bush right there. <laughs> Dang it. Cameraman's in the way. <laughs> you know where Mike's at? We should we should have just left the dog out of this. We got down on the flat, and Mike figured that maybe having a flushing dog would be better. So my current dog, Addie, she's four years old, female chocolate. She's got a really good nose. Within a few minutes, I could get back to the house and get Addie. Can you see her to your right, Eric? Yep. Good shot, Mike. When we got down closer to the bottom, which became more of a flat, uh, the single started holding. And that's that's when the pointing dog comes into work. Find that bird. Oh, you sucker, I hit you. Good girl, good job. Didn't go down. I had that bird clean too, huh? Yep. You gotta love those messes. Fun though. Fun though. Bird. And that bird. Yeah, we kind of pushed the birds kind of out of the valley and off to the edges and some of them flew back up the draw and we kind of did a sweep back around the canyon.
we came back up and we started in, got a few singles, and then we were able to get on a few more and kind of finish out. Nice job. Drop it. Good girl. Good girl, Abby. Shoot! What happened? I couldn't get it. I had my gun in my pocket. I get more enjoying watching her work a bird and a scent and trying to get that flush. And Just looking over and seeing your dog on point, like they're part of the experience too. I wasn't like that when I was younger, but now it's part of it and you enjoy that part too. Had a phenomenal time. I'd like to do it again. Maybe have Mike say a good shot, Eric, or something once in a while. But uh, outside of that, you know, no, it was fun. One of the things I really enjoyed about this trip was getting to watch the dogs work and exploring all these new areas. I just had a great time hunting with my cousin and our buddy Eric. It's really just a special time. Time now for another Harrods Cookhouse Recipe, brought to you by Micklich, the Spokane Spice Company. Today we are making walnut and pomegranate braised quail. Start by toasting walnut halves on a cookie sheet for 10 minutes at 350 degrees. Season bird legs and breasts with Harrods Cookhouse Sunrise to Sunset All-Purpose Seasoning. Brown quail in heavy stock pot with melted butter. Once browned, remove meat and set aside. Add grated onion and cook until golden brown. Grind walnuts into a powder and add two onions. Then add chicken stock, pomegranate syrup, honey, tomato paste, pumpkin pie spice, and lemon juice. Stir liquid and add quail meat. Bring to a boil and then simmer for two to three hours or until stew is the consistency of oatmeal. Serve over rice, garnish with orange zest and chopped walnuts and enjoy. For this and other great fish and wild game recipes, visit the Herod Outdoors website and YouTube channel. In a lot of edgy type habitats where you might have riparian areas, the, the quail seem to really like those. When you get up our way up here in the Cooley, the Grand Cooley, and up in uh, upper Douglas County, we have a lot of sagebrush, and that seems to be uh, in, in wetland areas. You know, the Columbia Basin's full of wetlands, and so you have lots of riparian type plants, uh, rose bushes, 